Thank you, Still Ridge, for that great song, The Resurrection. I'll tell you what, that ought to thrill your soul. If you're glad for the resurrection, just hit that like button right now, that heart right now. And I'd like for y'all to share this message. Now, get, the, get this out to everybody you can. Uh, if everybody on uh, the social media right now, just hit the share button. Uh, I've got a message I want everyone to hear. Uh, this is Easter. It's a wonderful day. I uh, thank God for Easter Sunday. I know this uh, coronavirus has kind of uh, changed things as far as us being in this auditorium, but I want you to know there's one thing that has never changed, and that's Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the same today and tomorrow and forevermore. Uh, he's saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. Isn't that great? Uh, aren't you glad you're serving an unchanging God, an immutable God, a God that stays the same? Uh, you know, there's a lot of people you can't count on, but you can on this resurrection Sunday morning. You can count on God. You can know that he's going to be faithful. You can know that he is in control. You can know that that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can know that he loves you. He loves you when you're up and he loves you when you're down. He loves you when you're in and he loves you when you're out. Thank God we're serving a risen Savior. And because he lives, we live also. I tell you, that resurrection song just stirred my soul. Uh, Sister Stacy Howe wrote the song. I believe God just inspired her. And I'm thankful for all the music of our church. Even during this downtime, uh, hadn't the music been wonderful? Hadn't it been inspiring? Hadn't it been a blessing? And you know, I am glad to be a member of a church where God has planted people here to give him glory and that God is getting glory from Tate Valley Baptist Church. I, oh, hallelujah. I, you ought to be glad you're a member of a church that's vibrant. Even during this time, we're getting people saved. Uh, I'm getting calls where people's life has been changed. Uh, there's some folks that seemed uh, so depressed and down. I talked to people this week and, and was able to encourage them. You said, what was the basis of your encouragement? I pointed them back to an empty tomb. I pointed them to a Savior that is coming again. I, I told them that he loves them. Amen. Well, go to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. And let's try to get into the Word of God today. By the way, heaven and earth shall pass away, but God said, my word shall not pass away. The Bible said, forever is thy word settled in heaven. I'm glad that God has given this King James Bible, which is the preserved Word of God, and we can rest upon its truth. We can, we can walk by its truth. Thank God we can work because of its truth. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, somebody say amen, he hath perfected, perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days saith the Lord. I put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of, of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Let's pray our Father right now. There may be a sinner who's without Christ. I pray God that they see their need of Christ that they would accept the risen Savior, that they would trust you only for salvation. 
And God, we are, I pray for the Christian that Lord maybe are, is down and depressed and wondering about the future and wondering what's going to go on in their life in these next 30, 60, 90 days. Lord, assure them today because of your finished work and because of your resurrection, we're going to be all right. I read the back of the book, Lord. The devil's going to hell, and we win. I'm glad, Lord, I'm on the winning side. Now, you bless, Lord, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Well, hallelujah. I'm glad we got a living Bible because we got a living Savior. We live in a humanistic society. Let's just tell it like it is. Our world is focused upon man, uh, how smart man is, how advanced man has become, uh, the achievements of man. We, we celebrate what man does. Society today is humanistic and ungodly and anti-God and anti-Christ and they're trying to raise up man. But I want you to know something, friend. Men come and men go. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 5, I call it God's obituary. I want you to know people are going to die. And let's just tell it like it is. You ain't going to remember a lot about them after they die. Oh, you may go to a funeral and you'll probably see if somebody was real popular, if there was a big crowd. But the truth of it is, once they die, and once it's over, it's done. But I'm glad for what verse 12 said. But this man, all the Old Testament people, the, the, the prophets, they all died. The kings, they died. Uh, the priests, they died. Uh, if you read the Old Testament, it is a failure. But thank God. For this man, that's what our preach was today. If you love this man, hit the like button. If you, if he's done something for you, I hit the heart button. I want you to know I'm glad for this man. Oh, hallelujah. They, they were talking about him before he came. Hallelujah. All the Old Testament types pictured him. Thank God. The testimonies of the prophets foretold him. Thank God. I want you to know something. Even before he came, they talked about him. But 2,000 years later, they're still talking about him. Hallelujah. Our church is witnessing this man. We're seeing this man help us through this dark hour. Hallelujah. You say, why well, can't you celebrate at Easter? Why is it such a great day? By the way, I had somebody say to me, well, we're not having Easter this year. What? Ladies and gentlemen, he is Easter. He's alive. He's the reason. Thank God. He said, well, it's just not the same. Oh, yes, it's the same. He's the same Savior. He died 2,000 years ago, but he's still the same. Oh, hallelujah. He said, well, Preacher Smith, I wasn't able to buy my new clothes this year. Well, <laughs> oh, my mule's about to get loose. I've been clothed by the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got, whoa, when the devil goes up and accuses me, you know what God does? He looks over his balcony, and he looks at John Smith, and he doesn't see my sin. He doesn't see me the way I was. He sees the precious blood and the righteousness of his son. I'm justified as if, as if I've never seen it. I'm declared righteous. You say, why? Because of this man. Woo. Hallelujah. Let me give you three things that I found in this passage of Scripture about this man. First of all, I want to talk about the previous shadows. In verse number one, the Bible said, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year, continually 
make the comers therein too perfect. The previous shadows, they were ineffective rituals. They had rituals. They had blood sacrifices. But they were ineffective. There's only one thing's effective to wash your sin away, and that is the blood. Those Old Testament rituals, they had to do them over and over. Then the Bible said, if you look at verse number two, or the last verse, of part of verse number one, when they offered them year by year, continue to make the comers thereunto perfect. An imperative repetition. They'd do it every year. You say, why did they do it every year? Because they were ineffective. They were just rituals. They could not put away sin. But this man, oh, if you listen to me today, if you're a drunk, a harlot, you're into pornography, you're into sin up to here, I want you to know I'm talking about this man who could take away your sin. Then I see an inviting remembrance. Verse 3 says, but in those sacrifices, there's no remembrance again made of sin every year. Every year they remembered it. Every year. That's why they had to come back. But I want you to know, <laughs> Woo! as the choir was singing earlier, it is finished. Thank God he made one sacrifice for sin. Hallelujah for that. Then verse 4, the impossible result. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run me a little rabbit here. A lot of people believe in hyper-dispensationalism. Here's what I mean by that. They, they believe that the Old Testament saints were saved by the law and those offerings. And they believe the tribulation saints after the rapture is going to be saved by works. Ladies and gentlemen, that's false right from hell itself. Because see, those sacrifices could not put away sin because there was always a remembrance. They never put it away. I'm thankful when he offered his life for me, he put away my sin. Hallelujah. I believe the Old Testament saints were saved by looking toward the cross. We're saved by looking back to the cross. But I want you to know something. We are saved because of this man. Hallelujah. Then I want you to know, secondly, his priestly superiority. Thank God. When Malachi ends, the book of Malachi, it ends with a curse. Talks about ceremonies that were unexplained. Talked about prophecies that were unfulfilled. Talked about sacrifices that were insufficient. But I want you to know something. He is the fulfillment of the sacrifices. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies. Thank God for this man. Hallelujah. I want you to notice in verse 5, his submissive descent. Hallelujah. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared. Well, hallelujah. Thank God for a prepared body. Ladies and gentlemen, those sacrifices, the old Testament could not do it. But God laid the whole world's sin on his son, a prepared body. Thank God he was virgin born. Thank God that the blood that ran in his veins wasn't the blood of the first Adam, but was the blood of God. Then I see in verse 6 and 7, the prophetic book. 
Look what it says. Well, hallelujah. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, for seeing thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come into the volume of the book. It is written of me to do the will of God. All the Old Testament offerings were a picture of what he done on Calvary, of his work. That Passover lamb in the Old Testament, the blood that was put on the lintels of the door. Uh, John the Baptist, when he came, said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Zechariah called him the branch. Job said, My Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah, he lives. Thank God he lives. Thank God he came into the volume of the book. Thank God this Bible is a love letter from God about this man. Then verse 8, 9, and 10 talks about his sacrificial death. Thank God for it. Look at the verses. They're awesome. But when he said sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings, an offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Those offerings of the Old Testament never put away sin. And let's just tell it like it is. We all go back to the first Adam. We are condemned. We are on our way to hell. But I am thankful that Jesus Christ, now let me say this. He's not the second Adam. Now he's called the second man, but he's not called the second Adam. He's called the last Adam. This man, you say, why? Because he was going to undo everything that Adam messed up. Hallelujah. Thank God that God committed his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever lasting life. Thank God for that old rugged cross. Thank God huh, he was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Thank God. Listen to this. He was made sin for us. He became sin. Whoremonger, he took your sin. Drunk, he took your sin. He became your sin. He was the ultimate sin bearer. He was the substitute. Thank God, he bore my sin. The Son of God became the Son of Man that we that are the Son of Men can become the sons of God. Not only do I see the rugged cross, but I see the royal crown. Let me read some more verses. The Bible said, by the which will, we were sanctified, verse 10, through the offering of the body of Jesus once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of God. Wow, well, hallelujah. We see his position of authority. He sat down at the right hand of God. He overcome death, hell, and the grave. 
They, they beat him. They put a crown, crown of thorns in his head. Doctors say he was beaten with every flesh wound common to man. But he got up. Hallelujah. Somebody hit the like button. He got up. He didn't stay down. He didn't stay in the tomb. He got up on resurrection morn. Hallelujah. It's a position of authority. It's a position of accomplishment. Now let me try to illustrate it. Let me bring this chair over. Karen, y'all get this for me. The Bible said he sat down. Woo! At the right hand of the Father. You say, what do you mean? He sat down. He accomplished something. He done a work for us. He's finished with it. Salvation's way is finished. Hallelujah. He sat down. It's a done deal. Woo. Hallelujah. I want you to know something. <laughs> Boy, I'm about to shout right now. I want you to know something. He's finished that plan. We can come to him. Then look at verse 13. I see a reserve conquest. Yes, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. A reserve conquest. Oh, I know what some of you are thinking. Sin's rampant. It looks like the devil's winning. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm on the winning side. One of these days he's going to make the devil bow. You see, crime is going on. They're killing babies every year. I want you to know one of these days he's going to make his enemies his footstool. We're on the winning side. The devil's losing and we're winning. Oh, I know. There'll be people tell you, don't look like we're winning. Look at what's going on in this world. It don't look like we're winning. Oh, yes, we're on the winning side. Who do you think's taking us through this trouble? Who do you think's got it all under control? It's this man. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Then lastly, verse 14 and on, I want to talk about the precious salvation. The Bible said for, by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. You say, well, what's so special about this man? Well, I'll tell you what's special. Who he was before he came. He was God. Yeah. He said, let us make man in our own image. Who you think he's talking about? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. This man. What he done while he was on the earth. <laughs> he, he healed the sick. Uh, he, 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 he healed the blinded. He, he, he raised the dead. This man. How he got up after he died. <laughs> oh, hey. Listen, look at me. I, I'm not talking about the taking a trip to Mecca. Come on, help me. I'm not talking about that. I, I, I'm not talking about Mohammed or Buddha. I'm talking about this man, Whew. and what he's doing right now, making intercession for us, and what he purchased by dying on the cross. Now notice his actual position, established setting. He said he sanctified us or set us apart. Thank God I've been set apart. When I got saved, I was sanctified on the inside once and for all. Hallelujah. And then I see an eternal status. Protected. Perfected forever. I'm glad I don't have to go back every year and get it redone. Somebody help me preach right there. You know, I know some people. I might as well just preach. That they believe you can be saved and lost, saved and lost. 
I know one, that's one woman came to me and said, Preacher Smith, will you pray for me? I've been saved seven times. I looked at her, I said, you've been saved seven times, you ought to pray for me. I looked at her, I said, you ain't been saved seven times, you only get saved once. Because when he saves us, he perfects us, he seals us. Hallelujah. Yes, uh, somebody ought to hit the like button. They saved us. Then I see an active persuasion. But right here, I done planned on just taking off and running all the building and shouting. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, an active persuasion. You ever heard the statement, can I get a witness? Well, I want to tell you, we got a witness. Oh, you know what the Holy Ghost says? January 31st, 1973. Isaiah, when I convicted John Smith of his sin and witnessed to his old sinful, dreadful heart and Form Christ within him, and he was saved. I'm glad for the witness and the sealing power of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank God we got a witness. Then I see a authoritative provision. Verse 16, a new covenant. The old covenant is gone, but he's written a new law in our heart. Thank God we can live for him today because of this Man, whoo, then I see a, well, hallelujah, an absolute pronunciation. Look at verse 18. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. An absolute pronunciation. I want you to know something. There ain't nothing can get you to heaven but the blood. And there's nothing, no offering. Uh, do you know there's some people praying to a cow today as their God. I ain't trying to make fun of them, but that's, I, that, that's terrible. That's some people believe speaking in tongues is what it takes to get to heaven. Then there's another guy that says that baptism will get you to heaven. Or going to Mary. There's people today going to Mary, uh, praying through Mary. Hey, let me tell you something. Mary had to get saved herself. Somebody help me preach. Hey, when this man came, religion was phased out. When this man came, the feelings were done away with because this man came to take the place and die for our sin. Hallelujah for this man. Whew. Let me give you just a little more. Christianity says, done, done, done. Religion says, do, do, do. Let me say this to you. I don't do right to get it done, but I do right because it is done. I want you to know, on this Easter Sunday morning, we're looking back and worshiping this man. You say, what man? The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the bride of morning star. You know, there's some of you listening today. This is Easter. It'd be a good day for you to get saved. It'd be a good day you trust Christ. It'd be a good day you get right. Praise God. You say, what do I need to do? You need to see yourself a sinner. Hey, he came to die for sinners. You need to see yourself a sinner and trust him. Thank God. And then you all realize he died for you. God committed his love toward us, and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. And it's easy that if I shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Well, hallelujah. And then there's some Christians. You're living your life right now. You're so worried, so depressed, so down, so defeated. You're living that kind of life. 
ladies and gentlemen, look back to the empty tomb. Find you a place there and bow your head to this man and say, help me. Give me strength. Give me power. I want to make it through. Oh, hallelujah for this man. Let me pray for you. If you're right there, why don't you pray? If you're unsaved, why don't you just pray this prayer? Dear God, I'm a sinner. God, forgive me of my sin. And Christ, the best way I know how, I want to trust you as Savior. If you're saved, why don't you just pray? Say, God, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Our Father, thank you for Easter. Thank you for the risen Savior. Thank you even in these terrible, dark days. We can look up, knowing as Job said, our Redeemer liveth. Now bless and help our people. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen.